This particular 86 behind me is in the color Thunder. And if you're gonna buy one of these, this would be hands down my choice. This color is beautiful in the sunlight. And at night, it almost has like this blue-gray kind of hue to it. Similar to Nardo Gray, but just with a little bit more blue to it. It's amazing, I love this color. For those of you that don't know, the Toyota 86 was previously the Scion FRS before the Scion brand was disbanded. The platform is also shared with its brother from another mother, the Subaru BRZ. The one thing that designates the 86 from the BRZ front end is this front bumper that kind of resembles an agitated catfish. One of the reasons this is the black edition is for the black accents, which are in raven black. It's kind of like a metallic black. And they're really pretty. You have the mirrors in raven black, as well as the wing tips and the risers on the rear aluminum spoiler. Kind of a nice touch, but I'm not really a fan of aluminum spoilers. I think this car looked best wingless. The 86 back bumper has the integrated diffuser into it, which I really wish this lower portion was painted the same color as the car. I think that would add a nice touch. It's a good looking backside. The taillights are also full LED to complement the LED headlights. And these headlights and taillights are my favorite part of the car. I actually prefer the headlights on the 86 more than the BRZ, but that's just a preference thing. Something odd I've noticed about the 86 is the trunk release is almost violent on how well it pops it open. A little bit delayed. It's just so aggressive. It's like, ah, I open now. <laughs> Still a decent sized trunk for how big the car is. The factory wheels that come on the 86 are fairly, eh, I'm kind of over them. I really wish they would offer something a little bit more aggressive looking. The standard wheels are 17 by 7s with 48 millimeter offset and they're wrapped in 215, 45, 17 square stanced Bridgestones. The optional 17 inch forged wheels Toyota offer, however, are a really good looking wheel and I think those, if they just came standard on the car, would be kind of nice. Wishful thinking. Subaru offers an optional Brembo package with forged wheels, and Toyota doesn't. There's no Brembo option for the 86. Sad. As far as the interior goes, the 86's seats, the bolstering is awesome. I'm not dancing, I promise. Heated seats, which you definitely don't need in Arizona, but still nice to have. The seats are black leather on the bolsters with suede-like material in the center and up here on the corners of the bolsters with silver stitching that carries all the way through the seats, as well as the inside of the steering wheel and the sides of the transmission tunnel right here by the audio and HVAC controls. The 86 comes with this little cup holder boat. It's really happy looking. This cup holder goes in the center cubby right here. Now there's two locations. You can put it in the front spot or you can also put it in the back spot right here. Problem is if you have long arms and you shift aggressively, when you go back into second or fourth or sixth, you're gonna elbow your bottle. Slight downside. When you open up the door, the kick plates have this little dot to dot to dot pattern on it that I actually like a lot. There might not be an 86 logo on the back of this car, but there's one on the floor mat, the dashboard, the steering wheel, the headlights, and the side of the fenders. I'm generally not a fan of fake carbon fiber in anything, but it doesn't look bad here on the doors as well as around the HVAC controls. Top tier models of the 86 come with a digital climate control with the little uplifter switches underneath, and it also has this cubby. It's, it's, a, it's a cubby. You, you now have a, a cubby to stick your keys. It's a, it's a keyhole. And speaking of keys and push button start, this is all you get for the key. You just keep it in your purse or your pocket or your, wherever you wanna keep it and just stick it in the car when you get in here in your keyhole. When cross shopping between the 86 and the BRZ, generally the BRZ has the nicer interior, but this black edition, the interior is really nice in here. The 86 now comes with this information display that at first glance it looks a little bit like an afterthought because of the fact it's a square screen inside circle gauges. I 
It, it looks out of place, but I don't know. It's kind of cool because you got your speedometer inside the tachometer right here in the center plus your gas gauge. And then over here on the side, it's split up where you have information that you can change settings. And then there is this cool performance mode right here where it actually shows you a dyno graph with the infamous torque dip in the power band and a G meter. The G meter is actually really cool. I like that a lot. Back seats. All right, you guys know Roman loves climbing in back seats. So we'll see if I can get in the back seat of this thing. Fill the seats. Push it all the way forward. Oh my God, are you serious? Ouch. What did I sit on? Oh, I got a water. Ooh. All right, and now tip it back. Oh, so. My head hits the back window. The back seat in these cars is nope. The head unit's about as basic as it gets. It has a volume knob and HD radio, and other than that, there's nothing really to talk about. The hazard button is so cute on this car. Look at that. It's just a little cute triangle. I love it. And then you have the traditional Toyota digital clock right here along with the indicator for your airbag. This 86 is equipped with the six speed manual which is the only way I would have mine, but that's just me. Hands down, this is just a nice interior, especially for the price point being just over $28,000. Okay, I'm just gonna drive it, so. When you start the car, you now have a little 86 logo that pops up on the screen and a lot of beeps too. You can hear that slight boxer rumble to it along with the loud beeping because I don't have my seatbelt on. The Boxer Rumble isn't really that pronounced with the FA20. You could put some UEL manifolds on this thing though and it would definitely brat. That's how I'd have mine. car props. Turning radius is amazing. I'm going to turn around this little little cul-de-sac area. Will it do it? Did I go off the road? Nope. I just turned around in two lanes. Complete full 360. That's an awesome turning radius. So why is this car still important after over five years of on the market? Well, things get better with age. At least I've been told that. A lot of people complain that the car is underpowered, but here's my thing on this. The car was designed for tuners in mind. It's a great track car. It's a great platform to build on. Sure, it's not that fast. And if you're looking to get a fast sports car, this might not be the car for you. However, if you're looking for a platform that you can build on and grow with, if you're a tuner, if you like wrenching on cars yourself, this is a great platform to start with. And that's why I appreciate it. Despite the 86 being out for several years now, I have to say I love it and I think it's getting better with age. And then this Thunder color is amazing. Definitely recommend getting it in Thunder if you're going to get one. Hope you guys enjoyed my review and I will see you next week on TFL with another. Bye!